11 and chill that I get on a Sunday morning. They're very vicious. Ooh. Listen to this growl that she does. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, let's chill a little bit. Can we chill a tiny bit? Honestly, I would not change it for the world though. Mornings are just not the same when you don't get woken up by a lick or like the ball dropped on your head, which is this morning. How have you woken up so playful today? <laughs> Let's get this day started. I use now is Cordially. I downloaded this app called Yucca, which is Y-U-K-A. And basically you can scan all of your beauty products, all of your makeup, all of your skincare products. I think it might do pre-packaged food as well, I'm not sure. Um, and it tells you what the ingredients are and what those ingredients mean. So it basically flags up anything potentially harmful and then gives the product a score out of 100. Um, and it's pretty eye-opening. I would highly recommend downloading it. There's quite a few of my products that I've stopped using because they've got like potential hormone disruptors, um, irritants, and actually so many things that are worse than that. Um, so yeah, I've been using it as a guide and pretty much every single quarterly product I've ever scanned comes up with like at least like a 90 out of 100, which is pretty good. Um, considering I've had products that were a zero out of 100. That said, there are a few of my products that don't score that well that I probably will continue to use just because I love them so much but I thought it's really helpful for things that you don't really mind so for example my body creams I'm not fussy about that it doesn't need to be a particular one so you may as well not be doing yourself any extra harm and I actually love quarterly products anyway so I was really pleased to find out they score well yeah that's been honestly life-changing Sunday. I thought that we could just spend the morning together today and I could kind of show you all of the things that I do on a Sunday morning that really set me up for having a great week. Sunday mornings are my productive get ready for the week time and then Sunday afternoons and evenings are definitely chill time. Kenny's normally off work so we just like watch movies, go for a Sunday roast, I do loads of reading and just spend that time together. So I thought I would specifically show you my Sunday morning because that's the bit that really sets me up for the week um so in a sec i'm going to show you my new breakfast obsession i've got a new breakfast thing going on um but first this kitchen definitely needs some attention so i'm going to give this a quick clean while i have my cup of tea and then we can make some breakfast <laughs>
really into having sweet breakfast. I feel like it's a summer thing. I definitely don't have this in the winter. But I used to always have porridge, but I think something about the oats is like too heavy for me in the morning. It never makes me feel good after I've eaten it. So my new thing is making yogurt bowls. Obsessed with these. Let me show you what I use. So I think this is everything I'm gonna put into mine today. So this is the key ingredient. I've been absolutely loving this vegan Greek yogurt, which is plants, which is deliciously Ella's range. I got this from Waitrose, I think. Um, I'm not sure where else they stock it, but that's where I got mine from. It's so good. And then I'm also using the plants nutty granola. And then I put in some fresh fruits, so strawberries, blueberries, some chia seeds, and then there are some other seeds that I might put on top as well. And that's pretty much everything that goes into it. I'll show you how I put it all together. just something about this it is delicious it is honestly so good you know that if something tears me away from my avo toast it's got to be good anyway i'm going to finish this and then it's Ree's turn for her sunday morning walk i just popped on these adenola leggings these are the ones with the crossover detail that you often ask me about that adenola and i think they're literally called crossover or something i've got them in a couple of colors i think this cut's really flattering and also they're just really comfy i've actually got a mid-morning Pilates class today, which I will take you to. They don't let you film in Pilates, but I will show you as much as I can, or I might explain why I'm filming and they might let me, we'll see how it goes. Right, I'm gonna go and grab a very, very excited little Rue. She loves her daily walks. We'll take on a nice long country walk and then we'll head to Pilates. Also, this is very much a sneak preview of our bedroom. I just can't wait to show you the whole house now. I'm so impatient. We're just waiting on a few bits, a few finishing touches, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll be able to show you around the whole house. But even in here is not completely finished, like the lamp that you can see on the bedside table there. They're changing because they are just very much temporary lamps and there's a few different bits to do and there's loads of stuff here and over here that you can't see, so we'll get there soon. We're nearly, nearly there. Watch this. Rue, do you want to go for a walk? I can hear her running up the stairs. Hi, is that a yes? Is that a yes? Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Shall we go? Shall we go somewhere? <laughs> Good girl. You ready? on the way home so I thought I'd quickly run you through what I picked up. Most of this is because my parents are coming tomorrow so I wanted some like snacky bits for them. So I got two packs of rye bread because both my mum and I eat this. I got my favourite bread, if you can really call it bread, in the whole world. It's basically made from 100% seeds and it's just delicious. I've only ever seen it in Waitrose and Whole Foods um, but you can probably get it online too and honestly it's the best thing ever. I got some hummus, some tofu, some olives with garlic and pepper. I got some of my favourite chocolate and then I picked up this seed mix that I was thinking I could put on top of my yoghurt bowls now that that's a thing. I used to actually always have this. I think I put it on porridge and it's basically just a mix of things that are really good for you like sprouted buckwheat, pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, banana powder, chia seeds, goji berries, black seeds and lacuna. But it's like a really quick easy way to get some extra nutrients and variety into 
into my breakfast. I got some vegetable crisps. I got some of these pui lentils because they're really good for super easy lunches and dinners. I got some sourdough flatbreads to dip in the hummus. I got a sourdough loaf, which is actually still warm. Um, I got some more of my plants yogurt. I got some oat milk for my parents. And then I wanted to try this pasta because I saw it in my sister's video and it just looked so good. And that is everything I got. Just realized I almost forgot to do my morning journaling. And I actually had a really wholesome experience the other day because I was looking for a notepad just to write a list down in. And things are still not organized in this house. So I just grabbed the first one I found, which was this blue one. And when I opened it up, I realized that this was my diary or like my journal from 2019. And I think 2019 was the year that I first read The Secret. If you've not read The Secret, I would highly recommend. It's all about like manifesting, law of attraction, bringing things that you want into your life and like positivity and gratitude and all of those things. And this notepad was the first notepad that I wrote down things like what I was grateful for or my goals. 2019 was like a totally different time in my life. I was working in a corporate job. I lived in London. I had a housemate. I hadn't met Kenny yet. I was single. Um, and life was just so different and it was just really interesting to read the things that mattered to me then and how they've changed or some of them not changed until now but I think most of all it was just really nice to read and made me really proud that a lot of the kind of goals I had set for myself back then have kind of come into my life now and to be honest a lot of them I would have had no idea that they were things that I wanted back in 2019 because your memory does that to you and I think this is one of the really important things about journaling I found that almost one of the most helpful things to do is read back over your old journals because it really gives you perspective you can sometimes find yourself making like sweeping statements like I've never liked my job or this has never happened or I've never felt like that actually when you read through your old journals you might find that in the first month of your job, you wrote every day about how grateful you were and how much you loved it and all the new people you met and things that you just lose perspective on or you forget over time. It just kind of removes the like memory bias that you have because you can kind of over time tell yourself you remember things completely differently. Wait, that's a really long way of saying I'm gonna do my morning journaling now. But I just wanted to say it because I think sometimes journaling can feel a bit like one of those things that people just say you should do and don't really explain why it's good. And it's like one of those buzz things that everyone's like, oh do your five minute journal, do your gratitude list and whatever. But I wanted to explain a couple of real life examples of how it can positively impact you and how it's definitely positively impacted me. a hoodie on and some sunglasses because the sun has actually decided to make an appearance this morning and I'm gonna run to Pilates. I'm just walking through the park on my way back from Pilates and I'm gonna make one of my regular Sunday stops at the bookshop. I just feel like there is no way I'd rather be on a Sunday than a bookshop. thinking of making a vegan banana bread. I'm going to use the BBC Good Food vegan banana bread recipe that I always use. I will link it in the description. But I think from memory, that's with three bananas. So I'm kind of hoping if I just do two thirds on everything, it will even itself out and it'll be all good. This is what I'm going to use, obviously, with the bananas as well. Um, a few changes that I've made. I always make my banana bread with agave, not brown sugar. There's no real reason for that. It's just what I've always done, so I know it works. Um, I also always add in chocolate chips because it is not a real banana bread for me without chocolate chips. Um, we're running a bit low on cinnamon, so there's going to be slightly less of that. But I'm also going to add in some chia seeds and a few pumpkin seeds as well, just for some texture and something different. And then I always make mine with olive oil, not sunflower oil as well.
I'm so pleased with how this has turned out and the pumpkin seeds and the chia seeds worked, which is good. Um, and I put some on top for decoration as well. And then they're just like these little mini slices because obviously we only did two thirds of the recipe, but it looks so yummy. Okay, it is definitely chill time now. So I thought I would show you books that I just picked up and also the book that I, oh, hey Rue. Um, and also the book that I am currently reading. So this is the book that I picked the other day in the end. So this is called Call Me By Your Name. Excuse me, you can't join in on the conversation. I only actually got around to reading it in the last couple of days, but I'm probably two thirds of the way through already. I'm really, really enjoying it. I love the way that the author writes. It's a little bit explicit, I will say. But it's a really good story and it's set in Italy and it's beautifully written and I'm really enjoying it. So that's what I'm currently reading. Then I'm gonna go on to this one, because this is like the sequel, um, which is called Find Me. And I'll let you know how I find that because sometimes sequels can be a bit disappointing, but we will see. And I picked up four books today, really embracing the fact that I have my own bookshelf now, so I don't have to hold back. The first book that I picked up was Three Women, which is one of those books that I've just seen everyone talking about. So I saw it today and I thought I had to pick it up. All it says on the back is, this is the story of three women. And then it's just got like people's reviews, but one of them says, the kind of bold, timely, once in a generation, book that every house should have a copy of and probably will before too long so I thought I'd see what that was all about no Rue come on this way you can't go that oh my gosh what is happening excuse me I know you want attention you've had attention all morning right come on you can sit there you can sit there darling all right but that's it okay we'll just try and make this work I was saying to my mum the other day the amount of time I have to do stuff with one hand, surely I'm prepared for motherhood. Mm -hmm. So the next book that I picked up is called The Foundling by Stacey Halls. And just to give you one line from the back, it says, two women bound by a child and a secret that will change everything. And it's set in London in 1754. And I really enjoy a book that's set in the past. So the cover just caught my eye and it sounded interesting. The same story with this one actually. Um, this is The Glass House by Eve Chase. And the cover ropes me in and then the back says, when the Harrington family discovers an abandoned baby deep in the woods, they decide to keep her a secret and raise her as their own. But within days, a body is found in the grounds of the house and their perfect new family implodes. And I never read like a thriller kind of a book. Um, this may not be that at all, but I don't know. It just seemed like something different. This is 100% a case of judging a book by its cover because I don't even really remember what this one was about when I read the back. And it seems like a really random plot. But sometimes I don't think there's any harm in just choosing a random book that kind of speaks to you on the shelf because I think you can really miss out on some amazing books if you only go off reviews or books that are really popular and that sort of thing. So yeah, they're the books that I picked up today. I'll let you know how I get on. But for now, I'm just going to sit here with Rue, get stuck into my book and just relax and chill and enjoy the rest of my Sunday with Kenny. So thank you so much for spending Sunday morning with me and I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye guys. Bye.